Since you need new employees to ultimately serve your growing clientele in your business, it's a good idea to make sure that you have a line of people ready and willing to work for you. How to do that is really simple. You can use things like ZipRecruiter or other different types of uh, applications like that to go out and put your resume. Another really good one is to frankly make relationships with your local university or college and get with the leader of a strength and conditioning class or course and then get with them and work on internships. That's what we actually prefer for our clients. But you can also do externship programs with uh, certifications like NASM or ISSA and other areas like that so that you can do externships for certified trainers. If you wanna grow and scale your business, here are the internal five core functions that you're going to need to scale your business and what we have learned at Gym Launch and Prestige Labs to grow to over $100 million in revenue over the last five years. My name is Kayla and I'm the CEO of Gym Launch and Prestige Labs. And our vision here at Gym Launch and Prestige Labs is to help gym owners around the world reach more people, change more lives, and stack a whole bunch of cash. In this section, I wanna walk you through how we think about going out and building and scaling your teams. So in Another section in other videos, we've talked about what we call the five core functions of a business. So lead generation, lead nurture, sales, fulfillment, and retention. But when you think about that, most people think about that running their business. But if you break that out and you think about it from a standpoint of hiring and building your team, the same rules apply, okay? So I wanna discuss these internal core functions for your company, and they run in parallel to the external side of growing your business from a client side, but the same thing happens for your team. So let's look at lead generation as number one. So think of this as application generation. So a lead, when it comes to your team, is applications or open recs for hiring someone. The biggest thing with this, and this is a skill set that needs to happen, is you need to know how to generate applications so you are able to develop a constant flow of new employees coming in. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to hire them, but at least get a good steady stream of applicants so that you're not stuck with having to choose between two people. You really wanna be looking and interviewing eight, 10, 12 people for a role so that you can ultimately find the eagle so that you don't have to go through this process of churn and turnover. And you don't want that, you wanna grow, right? So you wanna grow and scale your business and turn is gonna just slow you down and you're gonna have a ton of wasted time and resources when that happens. Since you need new employees to ultimately serve your growing clientele in your business, it's a good idea to make sure that you have a line of people ready and willing to work for you. How to do that is really simple. You can use things like ZipRecruiter or other different types of uh, applications like that to go out and put your resume. Another really good one is to frankly make relationships with your local university or college and get with the leader of a strength and conditioning class or course and then and get with them and work on internships. That's what we actually prefer for our clients. But you can also do externship programs with uh, certifications like NASM or ISSA and other areas like that so that you can do externships for certified trainers. The next one is nurturing the applications. Once you get applications, number two is lead nurture. Because once you've generated the employment application, you still need to get them to show up. And it's really important to make sure that you don't just assume that they will. We need to think of this as recruitment. So you wanna have a process to take people from application through all the way to interview. Most of the time, what we have found is that business owners ultimately will underestimate the importance of this step. But if you get a lot of applications, you need to have this process in place to save you time and attention. So in the past, we've gotten four or 500 applications a month for our business. And you have to have some sort of automated or semi-automated process to, as soon as someone applies, to walk them through the process to get the most qualified candidates to actually get to the interviews and get through the interviews. Number three is going to be the sales portion, which is the actual interview process. Now, you'll notice that an interview and a sale are more or less the same thing. In both situations, we were seeing if it's a good fit for each other, right? They're selling us as much as we're trying to sell them on the vision and what we're trying to do. You just need to know which questions to ask in what order to elicit the desired result. Now, I'll give you an example. Interviews should be in multiple stages. I'm gonna give you an example of what we do for our sales team. So the first one is just a basic, real quick kind of culture fit with our HR generalist or specialist. So that's just to see if they're gonna fit from a culture standpoint. Then we do the next interview is a skills interview to understand their background, get a full deep dive into what have they done in the past, what type of sales philosophy, all that stuff that they like. That's done by the hiring manager for that department. So this would be a sales manager. Then we do an actual skills test where they hop on with the sales manager and the sales manager actually tells them, hey, you are gonna sell me something. So we're gonna do a sales call, you're gonna do a close call and you're going to sell me whatever it is that you are selling now or that you want to sell. And so they're actually going to go through the process and the sales manager's 
gonna be the prospect and they're gonna act like the prospect and they're going to challenge them. They're gonna bring up objections, all this stuff to see how the salesperson is able to handle it. Then the final interview is typically a full sign off by myself as a CEO in a sales position. Um, but as you grow and scale your team, ultimately long-term, I will not be doing that at all. But that's the process that we have right now, which has allowed us to really scale our sales team and to get just the top talent in. Number four is fulfillment. Think of this as onboarding and training. So similar to how you would fulfill for a new client, the same thing is you're trying to over deliver and prepare this person for success. Fulfillment is really interesting because normally you fulfill after you sell. Now within a company though, fulfillment is for your employees and onboarding and training. So your job is to ultimately help a new hire to integrate into their new job. And even more importantly, in some ways, the overall culture of your company. If you are able to do this right, you're going to save time and money on the turnover. One of the things that helps us in what we do is we literally will write out almost to an hour what someone's going to do for the first two weeks. And we have the person that they're reporting to, they are actually going to meet with them and do a quick check-in morning and evening for the first two weeks. So they're able to actually check with them, see if everything's going well and work through that. Keep in mind, we're a fully remote company and that's how we're able to get and scale our teams very, very quickly. And then the last piece is retention and ascension. So internal retention just means basically hanging on to your employees and your team members. Can you make sure that you hire the right people and keep them over the long term? To do that, you need to have great internal processes, management and communication cycles. Ascension in this case means where they are going to go in your business model. Like what's going to happen? What's the next career step for them? Are you able to build a new leader from them? Are they able to go on to management? Are they going to be a director someday? If you don't add an upward path for them, you're probably going to lose them at some point in the future because everyone wants to be moving forward. So how are you able to do that? And you want to ultimately ascend the ones who show the most promise and are able to actually take initiative and are qualified for those roles. This is kind of the components, both internal and external that we think about when it comes to building and scaling a business. If you like this type of information, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop a comment down below. And if you want to download this plus more of the frameworks that we've created, there's actually 29 other frameworks in this document that we call the seven money models we use to scale gyms to over a hundred thousand dollars a month, like clockwork. You can grab that by clicking the link down in the description. Either way, I hope you found this valuable and that you're able to use this to go and scale your business profitably so that you can ultimately reach more people, change more lives and stack a whole bunch of cash.